Dr. Ellis, you knew um, Ram Sarup and Sita Ram Gaur personally. How were they like, basically? Well, they were a bit different in the sense that Sita Ram Gaur was very straightforward, very sharp, whereas uh, Ram Sarup was quite diplomatic and, you know, preferred to see the positive side of things. Mm. But essentially they were on the same wavelength. And so, um, you see, Ram Sarup was really the uh, mentor. I mean, Sita Ram Gaur recognized him as a source of great ideas. Yeah. And also when enemies campaigned against Force of India, he knew that the real target was Ram Sarup. Yeah, you know, yeah. he was less visible. Yeah, and they were both communists before yeah. they went to the Hindu movement. How did they get into it? Well, you know, at the time of Mahatma Gandhi, people were practically groomed to become leftists to some extent. You know, the, the whole Gandhian movement adopted more and more of leftist ideas, uh, Chaya Prakash Narayan and so on. And um, <clears throat> so they were part of that movement and so they wanted to get serious. I mean, you know, the real progressives were deemed to be the communists. Yeah, yeah. So they wanted the real thing. Then um, Ram Sarup was the first to grow out of it, to see through it. But uh, Sita Ram Goel was uh, about to become a member of the Communist Party when there was a crackdown organized by Sardar Patel. And so the Communist Party itself told him, you know, wait a few weeks. And then by then, you know, he had been talked out of it by Ram Sarup. Mm. I mean, they're basically like the Lennon McCartney of like, yes. the Hindu Renaissance. The Lennon and McCartney of Hindu Renaissance. So, basically, it's, um, the only difference is, at least everybody's heard of the Beatles. Yes. Know, but in the Hindu movement, not everybody's heard of Sitaram Gaul and, you know, Ram right. Why is that? How comes, even now, when you talk to people, you know, hardcore Hindus, yeah, well, to some extent, the uh, organized Hindu movement, the Hindu nationalists, uh, do spread their works. You see, except for Delhi, where I have been to the bookshop, Suruchi Prakasha, and not seen any of their works. But you see, in the other places, Bangalore and so on, um, they themselves do some distribution. And uh, so many people in the RSS have some kind of sympathy. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you see the, uh, the, the top layer of the RSS keeps them and their influence uh, at a distance. And wasn't Sita Rambol a big critic of the RSS? Well, he um, was in two minds about it in the sense that they were the only organized Hindu force. They had, uh, they had numbers, therefore to reach people it was, it was profitable to go through their channels. At the same time, of course, he, um, he uh, shuddered to think at what a real Hindu movement could have done and how the RSS has really held it back and, and guided it in a wrong direction. Mm. So he didn't believe anything of this uh, so-called nationalism. Nationalism is a way of uh, obfuscating issues, of avoiding the real issues. Mm. Like... Um, you know, the, the, the opposition, Indian and foreign, is routinely used as a weasel words for, you know, when you mean to say Hindu and Muslim, Hindu and Christian. And many issues are understood wrongly. Yeah. So an example uh, that I've often given before, but that really tells the whole story, is during the Ayodhya movement, RSS publications always spoke about the Indian hero Rama and the foreign invader Baba. Now, his foreignness had just nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, you know, Mali Kafur was a native Indian mm. and he also destroyed temples. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that is beside the point. And on the other hand, you see, there are so many people, pagans and so on, elsewhere, you know, who were not in the business of destroying temples. So foreign versus Indian is just a wrong way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, about that he was very particular. Uh, like, for instance, uh, very uh, many Hindus still nowadays blame the British for all kinds of things. Yeah. Now, of course, the British have done seriously wrong. 
Um, they have organized economic policies that led to famines and ultimately killed millions of people, for example. But at the same time, the British are gone. And plus, the so British, you've had decades the yeah. time to organize things differently. And plus, the British are opportunists. They're only going to take an advantage yeah. that they can see. They're not going to create the situation. Right. They're going to see, like, hold on, is it something we can take advantage of? Mm -hmm. The situation, like, we know, Muslim and Hindu uh, relationship. Yes. And whatever the relationship was. They just right, the Hindu Muslim right. conflict was already yeah. there. And of course, it's fashionable in Gandhian circles, in Congress side circles and therefore sneakingly also in RSS circles to blame the British for that to claim for example that Pakistan was a British creation mm -hmm. it was not the British opposed the creation of Pakistan and only at the very end half a year or so before independence came you see then they faced the fact that you know they could not hold it back it, was, it had become too strong mm -hmm. so then they tried to make the best of it with the uh, rising Cold War situation, it was good to divide the subcontinent because one of the two partners would uh, side with the West against the Soviet bloc. And so therefore then they started supporting it, but uh, really they did not have their heart in it. And they certainly didn't create it. The Pakistan movement was a Muslim creation. Yeah, yeah. So what was um, Ram Sarup's view? Um the RSS and the well, Ram Sarups, he was a bit more positive in the sense that he um, he thought of the alternative. You know, suppose the RSS was not there. Uh, like um, he uh, he made a comparison with uh, Indira Gandhi during the Bangladesh War. You know, he said, well, you know, at that time, India had no one better than Indira Gandhi. Mm. But then again, she won the war. She did what was necessary. And so similarly, the RSS, well, you know, it's not perfect, but it's much better to have it than not to have it. Uh, like the present Prime Minister, for instance, is very much an RSS man. Certainly he's not perfect. But then again, imagine that Rahul Gandhi would be there. Yeah, that's true. What do you think um, both of them would have thought about how far everything's got to now with Modi, SP and BJP in power? What do you think they would be saying about them now? Well, I imagine that Ram Swarup would first of all draw attention to the positive aspects. Yeah. You know, it's far better to have Modi there than to have his opponents there. And uh, even if he does nothing at all, at least the fact that he is there prevents the enemy from doing worse things to him. And moreover, he does do a few things, though, and this is what Ram Swarup would first of all remark, Though, of course, on the Hindu front, he is a bit absent and uh, he doesn't seem to have his heart in it, at any rate, he's not doing anything on that front. Yeah. Though he is doing a few things, uh, which a BJP party worker has called keeping the pot boiling. Yeah. So they make some gestures that are pro-Hindu, you know, on foreign visits they go visit the Hindu temple and so on. But all this is very inconsequential. It's just decoration. No, just, uh, you know, it creates an atmosphere that people like, but the, the real issues are not being addressed. Yeah. The real issues being, first of all, two very important issues that do not antagonize the minorities, so there is absolutely no excuse for delaying them, namely redressing the inequalities against Hindus in education and in temple management. Yeah. And those are very consequential but why is the BJP the um, holding itself back? I mean, I can't see any reason to. They've got the majority. There's nobody really going to oppose them. Well, to a large extent, they haven't created a worldview of their own. They have borrowed from the secularists for decades. Yeah. And so they can't easily get out of that mindset. So secularists have basically conditioned them. Yeah. Which they can't get out of yet. Exactly. So, for example, they think that any pro-Hindu policies would automatically mean antagonizing the minorities. You see, that's something that the secularists have told them. This is not the case at all, particularly on the two most important issues. So what about Sitaram Gaur? What do you think he would have been saying about um, today's government, BJP and Modi? Well, as a member of the business community, he would certainly appreciate 
the economic reforms, the anti-corruption reforms of the Modi government. So about development, they are really achieving something. You know, even after a mere year, it is already visible. So, you know, especially for India, it's very important that steps are made on that front. Nevertheless, those cannot serve as an excuse for not doing anything on the cultural front.